Mabuhay mga kabayan, katoto, kasangga! Katsyokaran, katsikahan, katsyat, katweet, kabarkada! Welcome, Welcome to, to Mabuhay TV. TV! Ako po si Lou Pedres. I am John. At ako naman po si Julianne Jaime. And, And we, we are, are your Mabuhay, Mabuhay TV, TV hosts! We're very excited to show you what we have in store for our kababayan here in Winnipeg and all over Canada. And speaking of Canada, this year marks the 150th birthday ng bansang ito. So, happy, happy birthday, birthday Canada. Canada! And for sure, marami tayong haabangan na parties, events from coast to coast to coast na talagang haabangan ng lahat, especially dito sa Mabuhay TV. Marami kayong haabangan. We cannot wait to bring to you different local news stories that are important to our kababayan, such as, of course, immigration and many more topics. We'll also be bringing to you local community events that are happening in and around Winnipeg. We will also feature local businesses and educational segments that will help our kababayan settle in their new home here in Canada. Hmm, teka, bakit ba tayo nandito sa Winnipeg? Imagine ninyo ha, ang laki-laki ng pagkakaiba ng lugar na to sa bansang pinanggalingan natin. Ano ba meron sa lugar na to? Sa Winnipeg, sa Winnipeg, ang sayawan ng pate. Sa Winnipeg, sa Winnipeg, sa lamig na mamanhe. Ang yung alin, ang yung alin, at tinakot mga kamay. Before I arrived here in Winnipeg, I was told that they call it Winter Pig. Of course, I thought malamig. But behold, understatement pala ang malamig. So bakit nga ba madaming Filipino na piniling maging new home ang Winnipeg? As of 2016, 9% of the Winnipeg population are Filipino origin. That is roughly 70,000 Filipinos. Temperature here can go as low as minus 45 Celsius or as high as 42 Celsius. Extreme! Karamihan sa mga Filipino dito sa Manitoba ay dumaan sa Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program. Sa program na ito, makikita how Filipino value their family, willing to sponsor even their chosen family or as we call it, friends. Kilala ang lugar na ito bilang Friendly Manitoba, just like everyone's favorite, ang super friendly na si Winnie the Pooh, na galing dito sa Winnipeg. At syempre, dito din matatagpuan ang first Jollibee in Canada, a piece of home. So kaya pala ang daming Filipinos here in Winnipeg, it's through the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program or MPNP. Yes, Lou. And because the program continues to grow and change over time, there's a lot of concern and a lot of questions about the application process. One of the biggest challenges I hear as of late is because of the amount of undeclared spouses and family members. Mabuhay, attorney. Mabuhay. <laughs> How are you today? Excellent. Thank you so much for uh, being with us today and my uh, helping us, uh, especially our Kababayan, to succeed with their application here in Canada, especially here in Manitoba. Yes. Now that the applicant is aware, uh, what is the first thing that should be done to correct the information? Well, they really need to speak to a lawyer who's familiar with the process. Mm -hmm. If um, the family prefers not to involve a lawyer, maybe because of some financial burden, what they must do is they have to first ask themselves, are they a Canadian citizen? Mm -hmm. If they're a Canadian citizen, it is easier to start declaring the mistake than if you were only a permanent resident. Because as I said earlier, as a permanent resident, you don't have the same protection as a Canadian citizen. Mm -hmm. You could still be removed from Canada by declaring the undeclared uh, partner. So the first thing that the person must determine is if they're a citizen of Canada already. It's better to be so. Then once they are a Canadian citizen, they need to be very clear and upfront in the legal process 
to declare that partner and to admit the mistake that they made. They need to have a reason. Maybe the reason is, like I said earlier, the family didn't approve of the husband. Yeah. Or they had a child out of wedlock and they were very embarrassed and uh, because they're Roman Catholic and they felt um, that they didn't follow their, their religious principles properly. I mean, there could be a host of reasons. The sponsorship of that undeclared uh, partner or child, they're gonna, it's going to be a longer process. Mm -hmm. Uh, you may have to be interviewed yeah. and cross-examined by the visa officer, but the best advice I could give to all our Cababayans in, throughout Winnipeg and throughout Canada is don't be afraid to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. The immigration authorities will figure it out. It's not worth it. And maybe uh, those people who are listening to this program, they may say, well, why don't we doctor the documents? Yes, why don't we? Really cool. Why don't we say that, oh, we didn't get married in uh, 2007, we got married in 2010. Mm -hmm. Change the date. Don't do that. Okay. You're leaving a paper trail, mm -hmm. and it's far better to proceed in this fashion. You have to assume the Canadian authorities are far smarter than you, yes. and they're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. They do have a fraudulent unit okay. in the Manila, in the Canadian uh, consulate in Manila, that's devoted to figuring out who's committing fraud. So. Any advice to future applicants to avoid this kind of legal problem? Well, we know what the advice is, but it's better. It's right. I, I think in summary, um, tell the truth. Um, you know, respect your elders, but be ready to explain to your elders that, you know, things have changed a lot since they immigrated in the 80s and the 90s. The best practice moving forward is speak to a relative who lives here in Canada already if you can't afford to talk to a lawyer. Mm -hmm and that relative in Canada can easily speak to a lawyer like me. And, and I do free consultations, you know, in a 15-minute phone call, yeah. I can tell them exactly what to do. Sana po nakatulong ang mga information that Attorney Davis provided for us today. At kung may katanungan po po kayo, maaari po kayong pumunta sa Facebook Mabuhay TV, leave us a comment at susubukan po namin sagutin ang lahat ng inyong katanungan sa susunod naming episode. Hey John, balita ako, naghahanap ka ng bahay. Yes Lou, first time home buyer ako. May mga advice ka ba sa akin? Meron, panoorin mo to. Hi, welcome to Serena Homes. My name is Manit Chasel. So Serena Homes is owned by two partners who were in the business for almost seven to eight years. So two years ago, they decided to incorporate, and this is how Serena Home was born. The process is really simple. First, we meet the client. We can meet in our office, coffee shop, or even at their house. We explain them the differences between new houses versus used houses. We give them the differences between mortgage payments. Sometimes they decide to go with used, or sometimes they decide to go with new. Sometimes people get confused, pre-approval versus pre-qualification. So we guide them along the way as well, and then this is how the process starts. We also go through with what upgrades we can offer. Normally houses come with basic, basic features. We have all the options here. We have different kind of carpets, we have outside stone, different kitchen. So basically clients don't have to go anywhere, it's one-stop shop. All the houses built by Suino Homes come with free stainless steel appliances and also 10-year new home warranty for the peace of your mind. We are located at 995 McPhillips Street, corner of McPhillips and Mountain. We are very accessible. You can visit our website, serenahomes.ca. Look for the right person, their contact information. You can email them, call them. At Serena Homes, you dream, we build. Lucky Etc. Travels offers flights, cruise, hotels, vacation packages, and all other travel needs, including travel insurance. 
And in addition to the, the travel products that we offer, we also uh, do money remittance exclusively to the Philippines. Para muna kayo sa inyong mga ginagawa mga kabayan dahil isasama ko kayo sa isang nakakabusog na joyride. Ano pang inihintay nyo? Tara na sa Jeepney! Ang Jeepney ay isang popular mode of transportation sa Pilipinas. Pero dito sa Winnipeg, isa ito sa mga umaarangkada sa mga masasarap na pagkaing Pinoy. Kasama natin ngayon ang chef consultant ng Jeepney Restaurant, si Chef Albert Lalu. Hi, Chef. Hello. Kamusta ka na? Mabuti. Maayos naman. So, bakit uh, Jeepney Restaurant? Bakit Jeepney? Kaya namin naisip kasi yung Jeepney. Kasi yung Jeepney, parang modern type ng transportation ng, ano, ng to Philippines. So, parang ganoon din ang take namin sa mga pagkain namin ngayon. Mm. So, parang may modern twist siya? Medyo lang. Konti. Hindi naman masyadong, ano, masyadong madami. Drastic ng ano, changes. So, ilang taon na ang Jeepney Restaurant? Since 2013. So, ano rin, patataon na rin na wow. nag ng ano, Jeepney. Yeah. And I heard talaga <coughs> dinadayo ang Jeepney Restaurant all over Canada? Yeah, fortunately. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that's because I think uh, I heard yung uh, nagkaroon kasi kayo ng media exposure. Yeah, like, hmm. uh, medyo laki na rin. Na, yeah. oh, nung, so, let's tell us more about that. Yeah, nung 2015, Uh, nag ano dito yung Munchies, nagpunta dito yung Munchies and Chai Food Network. Wow, uh, Food Network, that's yeah. really big mm. ha, talaga. So, dun talaga kayo nakilala na gusto yeah. and I guess non-Filipino comes here too? Yes, so, mm -hmm. kaya and medyo ano, na-diverse na talaga yung nagpupunta dito sa restaurant. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. So, talagang something that we can really be proud of. Yeah, oh, right? nakaka-proud din. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> tell us more about what we have here like yeah, the menu that you pre prepared yeah. last year so yung mga best seller namin mm -hmm. tong sisig tong chicken inasal saka yung bago namin tong corn beef okay so caldereta oh kakaiba yeah. siya ha kasi ang um, alam nating was just a, is it how's the, the difference nito corn beef pa ah uh, caldereta tong corn beef pa nilagay lang namin ng medyo ano change ng konti so tong corn beef kami gumagawa Oh, okay. Yeah. So, ikaw nagtitimpla talaga yes. ng beef na yan. Kami mismo nagbabrine mm -hmm. yeah. oh, ng buong process. Uh, ito ang best seller talaga dito eh. Si si chicken ito. asal, yeah. So, um, ito ba yung uh, chicken inasal? Is it how close it is to the yung authentic na inasal? Uh, ito chicken inasal na talaga yung very authentic. Like, like yung... Um, Itong recipe galing talaga sa Bacolod talaga yung recipe. Wow! Yeah. Okay, so I guess yung mga taga-Bacolod, they would recognize agad na ito yeah. oh, yeah. talaga ito, mm. galing talaga sa amin to. So yes. that's good. And of course, ang ating, uh, uh, sa paring bestseller ay ang ating sisig. So uh, how different is it? Uh, is there a twist to the sisig here? Or is it the actual actually, traditional sisig? Yeah, actually, may talagang pagkakaiba. Chicharon, lalo yung chicharon namin. Tsaka yung sauce na nilalagay for the sisig. To complement yeah. yung, ano niya, yung flavor niya. Yeah. Supportahan po natin ang Jeepney Restaurant dito sa 714 Sargent Avenue. Ay nako, Judian. Sobrang nabusa ko dun ha. Grabe talaga as in. And you know what, John? Kahit na I grew up here in Canada, I have to say I really do love Pinoy food. So I'm definitely gonna have to check out Jeepney one of these days. Or even better, Puta na lang ako sa Pilipinas, so that's more fun and more adventure. Nako, speaking of fun and adventure, I really have to handle my finances properly. Ayo kong maiwan dito, no? Tapos kaya ando kayo sa Pilipinas na enjoy Nakakaloka yun. Oo nga. And actually, now that you mentioned yung financial check, I need to make sure that I'm getting my full financial background as well. And I'm not talking about just yung savings lang. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about having a full extended insurance coverage. Because I want to make sure that I don't go into some kind of financial emergency. Because that's the really scary part for me. And that's so scary, guys. Sobrang scary yan. My name is Marianne Ferrer and welcome to Agape Insurance and Financial Services. Agape offers services such as life insurance, mortgage insurance, group insurance, and also travel insurance. 
I also do living benefits such as disability and critical illness. And not only that, um, I'm also licensed to do the investment for educational plan, TFSA, and RRSB. It is definitely very important uh, to have insurance here and critical illness in Canada. Unlike in the Philippines, uh, people survive there without the insurance. Uh, here, you have to secure and uh, give the peace of mind to your family if in case uh, you leave them behind. Um, such as, you know, mortgage insurance, like who's gonna pay that um, if ever you go? Uh, what about all the debts that you have? And um, one of the most important thing is your final cost or your funeral cost. For life insurance or critical illness, um, it's always the rates is always based on your age. Um, it's uh, whether you are a smoker or non-smoker, and also what is your current um, medical situation. Um, if you are very healthy, then you get the standard rates. But if you have a medical conditions, then uh, you probably would get a little bit of higher rate. A lot of people um, get confused uh, sa different types ng insurance, but I always say uh, there's only two things to remember, uh, term insurance or permanent insurance. Um, I simply illustrate uh, my definition of term as if like you are renting an apartment, it's not really yours where you have to renew a certain period of time, like 10, 15, or 20 years. It depends um, what type of term or how many years uh, you want to be covered. Whereas the permanent insurance is just like buying or purchasing um, a house where uh, you can have it permanently. But under the permanent insurance, there's again many different segments where uh, you can have a whole life, where you earn um, certain uh, dividend amount of money. Universal life, where there's an investment portion um, um, and life insurance together, but the investment portion is of course not guaranteed because you invest that in a different portfolios. Protect your loved ones before it's too late. Uh, narito po ako. Um, I'm willing to give my service and help you with any questions that you may have regarding your insurance or investments or your living benefits. First episode pa lang yan, pero ang dami-dami ko na natutunan from buying a house to financial and insurance needs. Oh well, that, there's a lot that we're learning, but there's even more information that we're going to have for you. Alam mo that there's a Filipino radio station here in Winnipeg? Let's meet our hosts of our Pinoy radio personalities sa pagbabalik ng Mabuhay TV! Kiss your landlord goodbye. Why rent when you can benefit by owning right now? Welcome to Terra Commons, where affordable luxury living meets convenience, beautiful brand new, fully updated homes just off McPhillips between Chamberlain and Troy. Two bedrooms starts at only $169.9 plus over $20,000 in custom extra upgrades for free. Energy efficient geothermal heat and cooling, new home warranty, just steps away from shopping, school, restaurants, and other amenities. And instant equity. Wala ka nang hahanapin pa sa Terra Commons. Nadito po tayo kasama ang ating mga kaibigan from the Good Morning Philippines CKJS. Yuhu! Mabuhay! Hello! Hi! Hi. Mabuhay! So, isa-isay natin sila. Ay, ako magpapakilala. Yes. Chester Pangan po. Donna Natividad Arenas. Dito Tarok. Yes, at sila po ang narinig natin tuwing 5.30 to 9 a.m. in the morning, yes. Monday to Friday. Sila ang nagbibigay ng buhay sa ating umaga, araw-araw. Nangigising. Wala kayong choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, simulan na natin. Um, how 
did everybody started sa broadcasting? Ladies first ba? Ako ba muna? Ladies mm-hmm. first? Muna, so, okay. nag-umpisa. Sabay ka na, na, kasi ladies first eh. <laughs> o oh, sige, ako ba muna? Mm-hmm. 2004 ako dumating sa Canada, but prior to my coming here, I was involved na rin sa um, production, research, at saka sa writing for uh, radio and TV. And then there was a time also that I was involved in voice dubbing. Kasi mahilig ako umate, hindi lang masyadong halata ng mga arte. Tapos, hindi ba? <laughs> tapos um, naging involved din ako sa various uh, areas like yung sa um, community newspaper publication, tapos uh, theatrical production for the youth, at saka yung mga ito sa community organizing uh, things like that. Tapos eh, yung pagdating ko dito, I uh, was so lucky that they were looking for someone to fill in the... Uh, Filipino show. They were looking for a female voice. So, I was at the right time and at the right place. So, pinag-audition ako. Mabuti nalang nagustuhan nung, nung nag-audition. Yung voice ko, tsaka yung the way I, I read the news. Alam mo kung sino yon? Ito. Kasi kung hindi niya ako tinanggap, wala ako dito. May kasabang ano, donut yun. And, uh, yes. May mga paano yun, padulas. Mm-hmm. Jester pangan. Mm-hmm. Ay hindi, ano mo na, age before beauty. Lito turok po. <laughs> Kailan po na siya nagumpisa pa noon po ni Kirino? <laughs> Alam mo, at, uh, pinasok natin ito, nung, uh, nung una nang dumating tayo dito sa CKJS, tayo pinakabata. Ngayon, nawala na yung mga matatod na. <laughs> ano ba kayong natitira ngayon? Ako na lang kayo natitira. Pero ganun pa man, nung uh, mula nung tayo pumasok dito, naging uh, maraming uh, taga-suporta. Dahil itong uh, programa, talagang uh, minahal ng uh, komunidad. Uh, dahil dito, nakukuha nila lahat ng gusto nilang malaman. Kompleto Ricardo rito eh. Yeah. Di ba? Pag sa balita, kahit sa dismiss. Katatawanan. <laughs> Di ba? Nandito lahat. Kaya... Uh, patuloy na uh, kinusubaybayan ng ating mga kababayan. Mm-hmm. Ako nag-deliver lang ako ng pizza sa station. Eh. <laughs> Tapos bigla mo. <laughs> Sabi ko, good morning po. Bigla, uh, pwede kang uh, rice, pwede ka sa ride. Eh. Mm. Ano pala ako, 16, sa Angeles City, nag-start na ako, nag-broadcast. And then, uh, nung pagdating ko dito, right away, nag, uh, nagpatuloy na. So yeah, we're very blessed dahil uh, isipin mo, Winnipeg, Canada, na meron tayong uh, Radio 8 and CKJS na ayan o, oh, sintandahan na ni Don at Lito combined yung ating mga equipment. Pero tuloy-tuloy pa rin tayo. And they're doing upgrades uh, pa rin pa for us. So, sana sa susunod na episode ng Mabuhay TV, yeah, update natin to. Sabay ka na, na, na talagang nag-impose eh, uh, para yung bago naming studio ang makukuhan at mapapanood sa Mabuhay TV. Tsaka Live! Be- before, sa radyo lang kami, 8am. But now, global, nakikin- naririnig tayo. www.ckjs.com we're live streaming. May app na rin. Oh, okay. Marami pang iba. That's very exciting to hear na magkakaroon kayo ng bagong studio. Well, yes. Yeah, uh, maraming improvements, I guess, pagdating sa equipment. Um, one of these days, uh, although hindi natin pinapangarap kasi masyado na rin uh, saturated yung FM side. Ng, mm-hmm. I think going along, uh, yung yung uh, tendency na pag sinasabi, hindi, but, but nasa AM pa rin yung pang, pang Filipino. No, yeah. actually, that's the best part. Kung baga, we're the last of the Mohicans pagdating sa, sa AM radio, mas malayo nararating actually ng AM, mm-hmm. ano? And it keeps it, alin mo yung parang more local, it keeps it more yeah. homey, mm-hmm. yung dating sa radyo, Kumita. yung, yeah, it, it, mas, kasi mas marami tayong news and uh, current affairs, uh, so, uh, mas, uh, mas prefer natin yun. Pero syempre, uh, going uh, to stay abreast with technology rin, kailangan eh, mm-hmm. uh, ano rin tayo updated sa social media, yung ganon. So, napapanood din tayo sa Facebook, actually, <laughs> nagla-live uh, si Donna doon. So, uh, yun, looking forward, we're just gonna keep on doing kung Ano yung ginagawa natin kasi mukha namang yung formula yung nag-uwa. So, maraming salamat, guys. Maraming salamat again sa ating uh, Good Morning Philippines, Thank Chester, you. Donna, and Lito. At ngayon ay makakasama natin ang ating kaibigan, Lucille Nolasco of Afternoon Pasada na mapapakinggan po ninyo tuwing 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock, Monday to Friday. Hi, Lucille! Hello! Hello! Hello. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. So, how did you start it sa broadcasting? I started sa broadcasting. Well, syempre na mag-aaral ka muna. Nang, uh, I started communication arts sa USD. Yes. Majored in, uh, well, uh, arts and letters, majored in communication arts. Mm-hmm. And then I did my practicum at ABS-CBN. So I stayed there na lang. So okay. doon din ako nagtrabaho. I started at uh, Magandang Gabi Bayan, TV mm-hmm. Patrol, News and Care and Affairs, like assignment, like kumpanero, and uh, iba pang mga programs sa News and Care and Affairs. 
Okay. And um, how does it feel to have your own show here at ano, uh, CKJS? Oh, Siyempre, ano, uh, privileged and humbled at the same time. Kasi hindi naman lahat ng tao nakaka... Uh, karon ng sariling program na napapakinggan ng maraming tao. Mm-hmm. So, I'm happy. Nag- nagagamit ko yung napag-aralan ko sa Philippines kasi hindi naman lahat din ang pumupunta rito. Nakukuha ka agad yung trabaho gusto nila. Yes. So, mm-hmm. I'm blessed. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Nakapasok ako dito sa gantong uh, broadcasting industry dito rin sa Canada. When you started, is it uh, afternoon pasada agad? Oh, hindi, hindi. Uh, I started as a, a weekend newscaster every Saturday lang. Mm-hmm. So, konting oras lang yon, And then, naging uh, part-time, nag-creative writing ako dito. I, I do the commercials and stuff. Tapos, nag-open uh, yung... Uh, it started for, uh, with a one-hour program lang sa hapon, mm-hmm. 3 to 4. Wow! Called, and now, it's... Yeah, it's called oh, Manila TV Sound on. before. Mm-hmm. Si Tita Emi Joaquin yung, uh, ano doon, yung host doon. And then, she uh, went to another field. Yes. Tapos, nag 3 to 5. Hanggang nagdagdagan na yung mga oras. So, 3 to 7 na ngayon. Nagpe-prepare ako uh, kasi you have to do a lot of research. Mm-hmm. Hindi lang naman yun uupo ka dyan sa, sa board and then magsasalita ka na. So, you have to know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. You have to know what's going on around you. You have to know the preferences of yung uh, audience was in terms of music. So, you play pop, you play ballads, you play a little bit of a dancey tune. Mm-hmm. Medyo mabagal, medyo luma, medyo yeah. bago. So, mm-hmm. kumbaga eh... You have to know your audience. Too. Yeah, lahat ng klase ng genre ng, ng music you have. To Almost play. all, yeah. I just don't play, you know, hard, super, super rock. <laughs> Kasi baka maingayan sila. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So how does it feel na napagkakatiwalaan ka ng ating mga kababayan? Napagkakatiwalaan ba? <laughs> yes, it really feels good. It really feels good. Kasi, kumbaga, nabibuild mo rin yung um, rapport sa community. And the community needs si KJS. Yes. At yan po mga kaibigan, ang ating interview with Miss Lucille Nolasco. Maraming salamat at abangan niyo pa po ang iba pa naming mga palabas at iba pang personalities na makikilala natin dito lang sa Mabuhay TV! I'm going to interview Kathy Banyares dahil siya po ang uh, pinaka may utak nitong uh, event na to. And welcome everyone to Dala, Dalagita 2017, the finale. As well, we're featuring Jeremy Sonaris, Master Chef Canada, place number two, but I think he should have gotten number one in my opinion, but round of applause everyone for the beginning of the evening. Under the guidance of Judy Ann Jamie and her company, which she's a partner of, Culture Card. That's a wrap for our first episode today. Maraming salamat po for watching our first episode. We do hope that you enjoyed yourselves. And join us again next time for another fun, entertaining, and informative episode na magtatanggal ng inyong homesick. Dito lang sa... Mabuhay TV!